The Reserve Bank's Monetary Policy Committee is winding up deliberations at its two-day meeting and in just under three hours' time will announce its decision on interest rates. While the majority of economists expect the repo rates to be held steady at 7%, there is the small chance of a cut. Well, joining me with her view is um, Vivian Taborer, Portfolio Manager at Investec Asset Management. We also hope to be joined shortly by Cesar Kledliner, who is the Senior Economist at FNB. Uh, Vivian, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. What's your view? Do you fit with consensus? Do you expect no change at today's meeting? I think unfortunately we are with the consensus. We do think that there won't be a change today, but we would have liked to have seen a cut in interest rates. Um, we think there is still room to cut interest rates further. Why would you like to see a cut in interest rates? Do you, do you think at this stage the economy and consumers need another cut? We actually think that they should have seen another cut uh, sooner than this, but uh, better late than never. We think that the consumption side of the economy is very, very weak. And even if we look at sort of industrial production and manufacturing, although we are seeing a bounce off the extremely low levels that we um, saw a couple of months ago, our bounce has been a little bit anemic compared to some other emerging markets. Of course, we know looking at historical data such as the retail sales data for November uh, when the sector shrank by 6.6% and also the Reserve Bank's third quarter bulletin which really showed ha household consumption very much under pressure. That The consumer in South Africa is still not in a, a very good place and yet we have had 500 basis points of cuts in the course of last year. Why do you think another cut would help then? Well, I think just to put it in context, remember that we had 500 basis points rise and we've basically unwound that. On top of that, our normal sort of economic cycle, we've also had this major economic event globally. So we would have expected to see a new low in this interest rate cycle and we certainly haven't got to that. Against that, we also have a RAND that has strengthened over the last sort of 14, 15 months, and that's also effectively tightened monetary conditions in South Africa. So we haven't really had the full benefit of that 500 basis points cut coming through. And yes, if we look globally, other countries that also had uh, lots of monetary loosening have started raising rates again. So we have um, Australia, Israel, Norway, China looking like it's busy tightening up monetary policy at this point, and the US probably going to do so in the second half of this year. Won't we be very much out of sync with the, with the rest of the global economy if we do continue cutting rates? No, I don't, I don't think we should look at it on that basis. In terms of somewhere like China, they basically recovered all the, the fall they saw in industrial production. It's been a massive bounce. They're back to very high growth levels. If you look at somewhere like South Africa, we're not anywhere back near back to those kind of levels yet. And if you look at emerging markets as a whole, the region that was probably hardest hit was Eastern Europe. And countries in Eastern Europe, although they've seen some bounce, they're still actually cutting interest rates at this particular point in time. So we wouldn't definitely wouldn't be on our own if we cut interest rates further. Vivian, what are the factors that are going to stand in the way of an interest rate cut today? I think one of the factors probably is the Reserve Bank's inflation forecast, which uh, relative to our forecast and where we expect inflation to be this year is probably a little bit, a little bit higher. Um, so that is probably one of the things that's standing in the way. And then also probably the high wage um, uh, round of wage settlements that we saw in the latter part of last year. And of course, we also have the big unknown factor, and that comes in the form of ESCOM's tariff increase for this year. Of course, we don't know what that tariff increase is going to be, and we really don't know what the second round effects would be. Do you think it would be very inflationary going forward? Well, it does have a direct impact on inflation, really, in, in terms of the second round effects. We need to wait and see what's happening. But offsetting setting that, remember, we have a very big output gap at the moment. So that is going to give us some deflationary impetus as well. We've also got the strong rand that's going to have a downward, downward impact on, on food prices and, and on durable goods um, particularly. So, so there are downward pressures in the inflation basket as well as the very high services and inflationary impact we're going to see from electricity prices. You mentioned your inflation outlook for this year. Of course, we're getting uh, consumer inflation numbers out tomorrow after the MPC. We know that in October and November we did ease into that inflation target. What's your prediction for the December numbers when they're released tomorrow? We, we are going to see the December numbers and the January numbers go back outside the top end of the band. And the reason for that is purely base effects on the fuel side. After that, we're expecting inflation to come down quite strongly to a low of around 4.3% in, in the middle of the year. So yes, everybody's expecting inflation to go out the top of the band, but everybody knows it is for statistical reasons. And generally, the market expects it to come back within, to, in, in the top of the band after those two months. Perhaps looking at some of the positive uh, effects we're seeing in the economy at the moment, 
month. We, we saw the PMI data out last week, above 50 for the second month, so showing that the manufacturing sector is responding and is starting to recover. We had the Reserve Bank's leading indicator out yesterday. It rose 11.6% in November, and that's the highest growth since, nine, since July 2004. I mean, does this show that the recovery is intact in South Africa, that it doesn't need any more stimulus? Well, there is a recovery. Let's not. We, we can't avoid that. It's the strength of the recover that, recovery that's wor worrying us a, a little bit. And a lot of the effect that we're seeing in this sort of big bounce is really base effects and then inventory rebuilds that we're seeing after the big drawdown of inventories um, that we saw in, in, in last year. So part of that is really statistical reasons, but it's going to take us a long time to get back to the kind of levels of output that we saw before we moved into recession. Vivian, we know that the previous Reserve Bank Governor, Tito Mbweni, followed a very cautious route. Uh, Jill Marcus took over at the helm of the Reserve Bank at the end of last year. Um, some think she may be a bit more populist, a little more left-leaning. And of course, we do know that um, Kasatu and certain members within the ANC would like to see the, the mandate of the Reserve Bank expanded to include growth and job creation, and particularly at, at a point where we've lost over a million jobs in South Africa during the recession. Do you think this is a, an approach the Reserve Bank is going to start following? I think if we, if we look even at how Tito responded through the cycle, he was definitely looking at, gro at growth as well. So he certainly wasn't just looking at inflation in isolation. It would be nice to see the, the mandate expanded so that it could include that more specifically. But we certainly don't have a reserve bank at the moment that only looks, only looks at inflation in, in, in isolation. And yes, we do need to focus on what's happening on the growth side. We do need to create employment. It is imperative for South Africa's future. I mean, do you think, like the U.S., we could be following a jobless recovery in South Africa? Well, I think we're still in the stage where we're still going to see jo further job losses. So we haven't meet, reached the peak in our unemployment yet. And yes, once jobs are destroyed, it does take them a long time to come back again. So initially, there will be a bit of a jobless recovery. What do you think the risks would be if the Reserve Bank did go ahead and cut interest rates at today's meeting? I don't think there are too many risks really. The consumption side of the economy is very, very weak. And even though we're looking for um, consumption to turn positive in the second half of this year, its contribution towards GDP this year is going to be very low. And that's in a country where consumption is a very large portion of GDP. So there's really not too much risk at this particular point in time. If you look at credit extension numbers um, and, and you look at the manufacturing sector as a whole, there's not too much risk really to, to cutting interest rates further. Uh, you, and you don't see inflation becoming a risk in the short term in South Africa? No, no, we, de we definitely don't. We see inflation being very well behaved through the balance of this year and then some inflationary pressure possibly coming through into the second quarter of next year. I mean, perhaps just looking at the, at the UK example, I don't know if you had a chance to see those figures. UK fourth quarter growth figures coming out today, 0.1% quarter on quarter growth. And yet inflation in that country, 2.7% in December. Uh, so a, a pretty difficult picture in the UK and a, a tough one for the authorities there to, to, to deal with. Yes, it, 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 it is a very tough one and, and you certainly want to make sure that you have positive growth. The last thing you really want is high inflation and, and no growth at all. And that's not a risk that we run in South Africa at, at the moment? Not at the moment, but certainly the kind of growth levels that we're forecasting for this year and next year are certainly well below trend growth and well below the, the kind of growth that we would need to create jobs in South Africa. Vivian, we have to leave it there, but thank you very much for your time this afternoon.